Well, it took seven years, but scientists now have their hands on NASA's first sample collection from an asteroid. The OSIRIS-REx mission launched from the Space Coast back in 2016. This past weekend, the sample returned to Earth. What a moment. Joining us now to talk more about it is UCF physics and astronomy professor Dr. Umberto Campins, who has been involved in this process. Welcome back. We've had you on News 6 at 9 a few times throughout the mission. That's We're right. so excited to see you. And you always make it so exciting to learn more about this. You and some other physicists were a part of this process to help get to Bennu, get this sample back, and it's been like Christmas. That's what you describe it as. It's been the biggest um, privilege of my career to get this sample back. And uh, I got involved with the mission in early 2010 when the University of Arizona invited me onto the team to help them write the proposal. And in, in mid-2011, NASA selected us. We built the spacecraft, launched it from here in 2016, got to the asteroid in 2018, spent two years mapping it in detail, went down and took the sample, which was the most dangerous maneuver of the whole mission. And now we have the sample back, and it's at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. I'll be flying there tomorrow for a team meeting to take a, you know, to get the very first results after the, receiving the sample. Okay, you said that for you, the moment that this really was like a wow moment was when you saw that parachute open when it was coming down in Utah. What is it going to be like for you when you walk in and you get to finally see, you know, remnants from the beginning of, you know, Earth, basically, is what we're looking at? It's, yeah, it, it's going to be a huge, uh, exciting moment. And uh, there are all these, there's like six teams that are going to be looking at different aspects oh, of this sample. So some people are going to be looking at the physical properties, at the mineralogy, at the chemical composition, at the isotopic composition. So there are all these measurements mm -hmm. that will be made. Some of the results will come in a matter of weeks. Some others will come, you know, in a year. Mm -hmm. And I am sure that there will be follow-up uh, measurements that will be uh, uh, answering questions that we don't even have yet. Do there, you expect surprises or, or oh, what yes. is it that you expect? <laughs> Can you explain well, some of those? We expect surprises in part because one of the things about being a scientist, you have to be humble yeah. because nature will have its... It will well, humble you. It will have its own surprises <laughs> in there. So uh, in my case specifically, um, I had predicted that there was a possibility that there could be pieces of another asteroid on Bennu. Mm. And that was not a very popular, um, not very well received among the team, except for about five people on the team took me seriously. And when we got there, we found these bright rocks, which I had predicted based on uh, some characteristics of a meteorite that fell before and all these things that I had my reasons for predicting it, and we found them. But it, they turned out to be even more exciting than I had thought. They were from the most unique asteroid in the asteroid belt, belt called Vesta. Mm. The surface of Be Vesta is volcanic. Mm. And the surface of Bennu is not. It's never been heated. So we had volcanic rocks on something that had never been heated. And so we identified them. And this is going to have the theorists going back to their uh, pencil and paper and figuring out how these could survive because they mm. were telling us they couldn't. In any case, we discover these amazing things. I am hoping that pieces of asteroid Vesta will be on the mm. sample from Bennu, in which case we would get two asteroids for the price oh, of one. Yeah. And actually more than that, because we already have an agreement between the Japanese Space Agency and NASA where we, ha we are exchanging 10% of the, uh, our sample. So the Japanese went to asteroid Ryugu, and they gave us 10% of their sample. Oh. Now we're going to give them 10% of our sample. So we get to analyze both asteroids. Plus, if there is a piece of this volcanic asteroid in our sample, that would be amazing. We don't know, but that's one of the things that I'm expecting. Oh yeah. my gosh, I feel like we could talk to you all day. We do have more to, we would like to talk to you more. We're out of time because you said OSIRIS-REx is, isn't even done. It's headed in to check out another uh, asteroid the, in a few years. The mission so. has been renamed OSIRIS-APEX and mm -hmm. it's going to asteroid Apophis that is going to come really close to the Earth, in, but not going to hit us, but it's going to come real close to the Earth in 2029. Now OSIRIS-REx has become OSIRIS-APEX and it's headed that way. Awesome. Wow. Well, thank you so much. We hope you'll come back and visit us after you head to Texas. Let us know what you find. Always my pleasure. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Dr. Campins.